Shruti Sai Ram, dear students, welcome to Sri Satya Sai Loka Seva Gurukulam, secondary course English, 202. Today, we are going to read a very simple and easy poem, Tall Trees. As the name suggests, this is a poem about trees which are really, really tall. Let's improve our general knowledge a little bit. Which are the three tallest species of trees in the world? Number one, the coast redwood. This is in California, USA. It's 379.1 feet high. All right, this is the tallest species in the world. The second tallest is the Australian mountain ash. This is in Tasmania, Australia. This is the second tallest tree with a height of 326.8 feet. The third tallest is the Coast Douglas fir, which is 326.1 feet. This is in Oregon, USA as well. So these are the three tallest species of trees in the world. Now, if you want to know about the oldest human planted tree, the oldest human planted tree with a known planting date is the Sri Mahabodhi sacred tree in Anuradhapura. This is in Sri Lanka. It is 2,293 years old. So you can imagine it's really, really old. This tree was planted from a cutting of the original Bodhi tree in Gaya. So this is good, that, good thing to know, good general knowledge. Now, we all know that trees have a very soothing effect on our minds. The moment we look at trees, we feel good. And whatever affects the mind affects the body too. Now, there was a scientific survey. A scientist observed patients recovering from surgeries by putting one set of them in a hospital room, which had a window that showed a view of leafy trees. The other set of patients were put in a room that had a window view of a brick wall. All other things being equal, patients with bedside windows looking out on leafy trees healed on average a day faster. They needed significantly less pain medication and had fewer post-surgical complications than patients who instead saw a brick wall. So this shows that even a sick person can get better by just looking at trees because the trees always have a nice peaceful effect on our mind and the mind and body we know are totally interrelated. So the, a good peaceful mind makes our body heal better. Now let's read the poem. This is very easy. That is why I have not even put a glossary. Not a single word is difficult. But though it is very simple, it has got a profound meaning in it. I'll read the poem two times. With their feet in the earth and their heads in the sky, the tall trees watch the clouds go by. When the dusk sends quickly the birds to rest, the tall trees shelter them safe in a nest. And then in the night, with the tall trees peeping, the moon shines down on a world that's sleeping. This beautiful poem, the poet is Eileen Matthias. I'll read it once more. With their feet in the earth and their heads in the sky, the tall trees watch the clouds go by. When the dusk sends quickly the birds to rest, the tall trees shelter them safe in a nest. And then in the night with the tall trees peeping, the moon shines down on a world that's sleeping. I hope you enjoyed the poem. Now, as, a, as you can see, the poet describes the tree as if it's a human being with feet, heads, eyes to watch. Now, this mode of speaking is called personification. Now, let's see what personification is. Personification. Personification is a figure of speech in which a non-human object is given human qualities or abilities. When we say the trees danced on the lawn, 
we give the human ability of dancing to the leaves. The sun played hide and seek with the clouds is another example of personification. Now in this poem, the tall trees watch the clouds is an example of personification. So personification is a figure of speech where we give uh, human qualities to non-human things. All right. A short activity for you. Personifications. Think of some commonly used personifications associated with the words given below. The first one is done for you as an example. Books are our best friends. Here, the quality of friendship is given to a non-human object like the books. So try to make sentences with the other words, love, opportunity, earth, and time, okay? Another easy activity, you will notice that the second and the fourth lines of each stanza in the poem end in words that end with a similar sound. The similar sounds lend a flow and a rhythm to the lines and make them catchy and easy to remember. The similar sound at the end of lines is called rhyme. Find all the rhyming words in the poem. So you know that there are three stanzas in the poem and only the second and fourth line of each stanza rhyme with each other, the last words of the second and fourth line. So you will find three pairs of rhyming words. That's the clue for you. Now let's read the poem stanza by stanza and understand the poem. First stanza, with their feet in the earth and their heads in the sky, the tall trees watch the clouds go by. I will read it once more. With their feet in the earth and their heads in the sky, the tall trees watch the clouds go by. Now, here the feet indicates the roots, the heads top of the trees. This goes to show that the trees are really, really tall because they are reaching almost the sky. It's just a simile that they are very tall. And if the trees have to watch the clouds, that means they are very tall. So all the indication here is that the trees are really, really tall. Now, another way of interpreting this stanza is, it's like noble people who are really powerful, really noble, but at the same time, they are grounded. Their feet are in the earth. That means they are very humble. Now, can you think of some human beings who are strong, tall, and powerful, and yet humble like the tall trees. Here are some examples. These are like the tall trees. They are very powerful, very strong, and very tall, but they are also very humble at the same time. Here, when we say strong, tall, and power, it doesn't only mean the physical aspects, it means the mental aspects also. It means they are very noble people. I've just given the pictures of three, Sir Sri Abdul Kalam, our own Mahatma Gandhiji and other Teresa, I'm sure you can think of a lot more people who are like the tall trees, who are really noble. At the same time, they are very humble as well. This is the second stanza. When the dusk sends quickly the birds to rest, the tall trees shelter them safe in a nest. When the dusk sends quickly the birds to rest, the tall trees shelter them safe in a nest. So dusk is the time just before the night comes. The sun is set and the light has turned into darkness. That's the time we call as dusk. Just in the morning, just before daybreak, we call it as dawn. This is in the evening, we call it as dusk. This is the time when the birds go back to their nest to rest for the night because they get up very early in the morning. And who shelters them? The tree shelter them, shelters them because the birds build their nests in the trees and they stay there for the night and they raise their families, everything. The trees are not going to say, no, no, I'm too big and powerful. You can't come and stay with me. See, they complement each other. The trees, everything in nature complement each other. There is no, there's no disagreement. They agree with each other and cooperate with each other. This is another aspect which is shown in the poem. So trees shelter everything. Trees only know to give. They always give. They never ask for anything in return.
the third and final stanza. And then in the night, with the tall trees peeping, the moon shines down on a world that's sleeping. And then in the night, with the tall trees peeping, the moon shines down on a world that is sleeping. This shows that the trees protect us in the night. The tall trees, they are very tall. So it seems as if they are peeping down at the people. The world means all the living things in the world who are sleeping. And the moon is shining down as well. So this again shows that the trees are really, really tall. And also tells us indirectly that the trees are looking, they're watching over us and they are protecting us. We sleep safely in the night when the trees keep awake. They are watching over us, making sure we are safe. Who else is like the tall trees? Can you think? Helping others. Strong and tall and humble. Guarding and protecting. Selfless, always giving. The first person who comes to your mind or the first people who come to your mind are your parents. They do everything for us, isn't it? Now they take care of us. They help us. They are always giving. They are always protecting. And they are really strong for us. And they are very humble too. Now, apart from parents, I'm sure you can think of other people in your lives who are like the tall trees. Maybe your grandparents. Maybe your older brothers and sisters. Maybe somebody in your area who takes good care of you. So think of them and silently give a grateful prayer and thank you for giving those people in your lives. All right. Now, let's do a small activity. Imagine that you are a tall tree. One day, an injured, tired, hungry boy comes running and sits down under the tree, panting and puffing in pain. He picks up a big leaf to fan himself. He covers his wound with leaves to stop the blood and ties it with a twig. He folds some leaves into a cup and drinks water from the nearby river. Then the boy lies down under the tree for some time. The tree watches in silence. Describe in three or four lines what you might have felt as a tree. Now, to do this nicely, what you need to do is imagine yourself to the, be the tree. You are the tree and this boy does all these things. So, write a few lines. At least three or four lines is not a lot. You can write more than that if you want about how you felt when the boy did all these things. All right. Now, the summary of the poem, I know you don't need this because it is a very, very easy poem, but I've written it no, nevertheless. Tall trees can be seen in forests, villages, and mountain slopes. The poet says that the tall trees have their feet in the ground and their heads in the sky. The trees see the clouds passing by. This shows that the trees are really tall. In the evening, the sky darkens and the birds move to their homes in the trees for safety. During the night and by the light of the moon, the trees stay awake to keep a watch over the world as it sleeps. Now, the poet compares noble people to tall trees because they have a noble character which distinguishes them from common people. They are rooted in the soil like leaves. It means they are humble. Just as trees provide a caring shelter and refuge to some birds and animals, good people also show care and concern for the weak and protect them. All right. How about some multiple choice questions? If you are listening to the poem as I recited and gave a short explanation, you should be able to answer these questions without any problem. Which of the following statements is not correct? 
all right you have to pick a statement which is incorrect the first one different elements of nature work in close association with each other b presence of nature can only be felt near mountain ranges and rivers c trees are valuable because they give us care and protection d nature is symbolic of selfless care and protection so when you have a multiple choice like this first thing you do is read all the choices all right different elements of nature work in close association with each other we know it is correct all the elements of nature there's no disagreement between them they work together in cooperation with each other so that is correct second one presence of nature can only be felt near mountain ranges and rivers so actually presence of nature can be felt everywhere not just near mountain ranges and rivers it can be felt in other places too so you know that this is not correct but just you when you know this is not correct don't just stick the answer and go on to the next question make sure you read the others as well to reinforce your answer okay third one trees are valuable because they give us care and protection very true and the last one nature is symbolic of selfless care and protection that again is true so always remember when you read the choices supposing you come to the first and second and you think that is the correct answer don't be in a hurry and just stick that as the correct answer go through the choices all the choices and then make sure the one you picked is the correct one and then tick it all right so the answer is b presence of nature can only be felt near mountain ranges and rivers so that is not a true statement all right i'm sure you all picked it the next one tall trees are symbolic of tall people that's a b great achievers c nature lovers d people who help and protect others so here it means what do tall trees symbolize what are they symbol of and we know it is d people who help and protect others remember tall trees are like the noble people who do wonderful things for the people who are needy at the same time they remain very humble just like the trees who have their roots in the soil so the answer is d i am very sure all of you got both of them right five marks each give yourself stamp all right let's write number 1 imagine you are the newly elected mla of your area you are a tall tree you have both power and position write a short paragraph about how you would use your power and position to help others now why did you become an mla in order to use your power and position to help the people in your area so you have to write how are you going to use your power and position to help the people in your area and make your area a better place a model place in your country all right so you can write a few lines as much as you can write nicely all right think and write the second one is a letter imagine yourself to be the oldest person in your colony i know this might be a little hard to imagine because you are all young but still nevertheless you can imagine imagine yourself to be the oldest person in your colony you feel that the park here near your house has no greenery all right it's all bricks and walls write a letter to the horticultural department to provide some saplings to be planted in the park saplings are other baby trees all right so imagine yourself to be the oldest person in your colony you feel that the park near your house has no greenery it's kind of barren you want it to look really green and lush so write a letter to the horticulture department to provide some saplings to be planted in the park all right so that everything will become nice and green story of the apple tree this is a video i watched on youtube very nice so i would strongly recommend you go to that link 
and watch this video. I could tell you the story, but it won't be as nice as watching the video. Just click. If you can't click on that, you can just go story of the apple tree. You will find the video there. Watch it. It's a beautiful video and I'm sure you'll all enjoy it. All right. Instructions. Complete all the exercises which follow the poem in your notebooks. There aren't too many exercises. There are just a few, but they are to be done. Don't omit any of them. After reading the poem, you have already understood the poem. Do all those exercises which are already given in the video, the writing exercises, the activities, etc. And now complete the exercises which follow the poem in your notebooks. I hope you enjoyed the poem. Thank you, dear students, and Jay Sairam. <laughs>